Welcome to the Vintage Hollywood Archive. Long life is a gift, talent is a gift, and fame is also a gift. Some people have one and lack others, while very few are endowed with all. The selected few may not be as flamboyant as you may think because they're special beings. Perhaps the legendary Janice Page belongs here. She is and will continue to be an idol for those who cherish hard work, talent, and elongated lifespans, which she epitomized in Hollywood. Make sure to watch the video until the end, and if you're new here, don't forget to join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Vintage Hollywood Archive channel. Every workman, they say, is worthy of his wages. This is the only way I've found worthy to describe the iconic life of Janice Page. She is one historical image that may not be as popular as her huge impact on humanity but is sure a blessing to those she served. When you hear people say silence is golden, it is not just a statement, but creates an image of a modest personality, the type that I would like to associate with Paige, because it is in moments of silence that one can comfortably reflect on the life and great contributions of men and women of yesteryears, like this great American actress and singer, who is today among the last traces of Hollywood's golden age generation, Described by a critic as a pretty and spirited lady that is more like the hard-to-get girl, another thinks she is as beautiful with a voice that is almost as exhilarating as her shape. Janice is an amiable lady who is worthy of her status as a real survivor of an occupation that can be very unkind to her type of personality. She was once seen playfully clearing her dressing room mess of clothes and papers while she welcomed an interviewer with a smile and a cup of coffee. This silver blonde actress was in a workout sweatsuit and white sports shoes, perhaps ready to hit the road. The interviewer noticed the modest habit of her conversation, frequently referring to people as honey if she did not call them by their name. As a writer suggested, this may be a personality apparatus she has applied during her vibrant entertainment career. Though she might have retired from the scene with a modest story to pass on to her generation, this once upon a time Hollywood diva who started influencing society with her voice at age five, even without training, is a symbol of greatness. Janice Page's creativity was exclusively felt during World War II, where as a young, beautiful, and energetic singer, she entertained her audience at the Hollywood cafeteria. Being so glamorous and a singing sensation, it was only natural that she was used as a pinup model, and she was seen posing as one. And soon, she found herself into Warner Bros. Studio. She may have felt that her life skills were not in proper shape, as Paige quickly became a mainstream live theatrical performer, appearing in several Broadway shows. Her age-long career spanning more than 60 years saw her appearing simultaneously in stage shows and movies, and when the new medium, television, became fashionable, her talent was immensely felt. She became a prominent television personality in the middle of the 1960s and would feature in her sitcom, It's Always Jan, with an appreciative audience that history would not forget in a hurry. The good news is that she is still hale and hearty and has continued to pass on her wisdom and enduring entertainment knowledge to the younger generation. Having served the entertainment industry actively from 1940 till 2001, when she finally took a bow, as a friend once said, she is now a senior citizen. Paige is best remembered for her part as Babe in the 1954 Broadway musical The Pajama Game, the production that announced her stardom. She was born Donna Mae Jaden on the 16th of September 1922 in Tacoma, Washington. She fortunately was the only child of Hazel Lee and George S. Jaden, whose lineage is a mix of Norwegian, German, English, and Cornish descent. Some of the queries under investigation are her childhood motivation. But after her parents separated, she was left with her mother, who was fronting her for an entertainment career. What exactly inspired Paige for her career choice? It was reported that by the time she turned five, her star shine was already showing as she was already singing in public, then in local recreational shows. I'm not sure if it was fate or that of being connected to some entertainment pundits, but it was clear that her singing talent was highly encouraging all through her high school. 
And so, when Paige relocated to Los Angeles on graduating from school, it did not take long before she was signed in as a female vocalist at the Hollywood Canteen, even as World War II rages. By 1944, Janice Page and her mother were functioning in the Hollywood Canteen. While Hazel, her mother, was servicing in the kitchen, Page was seen on stage singing. At first, a talent scout for Louis B. Mayer asked that her mother fetch Page to MGM for a screen testing that she never did. In her words, they just signed me and placed me in a movie called Bathing Beauty with Esther Williams and Red Skelton. But she recalled what she was told. I had one line and a musical number. Her talent and beauty were not in doubt, as Paige soon became the Black Widow girl for U.S. Army Air Force pilots flying the P-61 Black Widows, and she was seen happily fronting as a pinup model, fully clad in its costume. Recall that Hollywood Canteen is a club promoted by Hollywood Studios specifically for members of the armed forces. That small part with MGM was said to have attracted more attention to her. After the production was released, her career was warming up, Maybe she never had a contract with MGM, or they just wanted to let her go as Warner Bros. agents took her in. While she was performing in one of her regular musicals, a talent scout agent at Warner Bros. spotted her as a potential celeb and decided to give her a contract that saw her spending five years at the studio. Time to try her luck in Hollywood movies as Paige was started with low-budget musicals and was regularly appearing opposite Dennis Morgan and other times Jack Carson. She made her first movie appearance when she co-starred in 1948, Romance on High Seas, produced by Doris Day, before co-starring in adventurous movies and related drama that did not quite suit her personality. On how it went down playing those supporting parts, second lead's girlfriend or the other woman, Paige noted, we were all stereotyped. She said that they initially assigned a leading lady role to her a few times, but her comic nature and singing and dancing skills pushed them to change to a supporting typecast. She described her experience as thrilling, being a newcomer walking around with very big superstars that you've been hearing about, like Joan Crawford and Humphrey Bogart. Paige said all through her career, she has had a way of being at the right place and at the right time, making the right choices. I made wrong choices too, she acknowledged. At some point, she began to think of another way to put her talents to better use. And as soon as she was through with her part in Two Gals and a Guy in 1951, Paige took a brave decision to bring to an end her Hollywood acting and move on. Although Warner did not renew her contract either. Well, she did not leave the entertainment industry entirely. She returned to stage performances because Paige was soon seen performing on Broadway productions until she turned a huge success in a 1951 comic mystery drama titled Remains to be Seen. The production saw her co-starring with Jackie Cooper. Before she got that part, Paige said the producers had interviewed more than 200 ladies for the same role. And I walked in and I declared that I didn't know anything about going on the stage and that it was not something I felt I could do. But they still gave her the part. It was just insane, she said joyfully. Talking about some of her interesting moments on stage, Paige seemed to be very excited about stage production. For her, there's no such fun as the one you can see on a soundstage. Not with the beautiful atmosphere accommodating the creative makeup department and you work with people daily and get to know them. You become like a family, Paige explained. I went to bed late and I'd get up late, but everything was fun. At this time, her career was beginning to take shape as Paige continued working hard and doing successful tours as a cabaret soloist. She described every part of the process as fascinating and difficult, adding that being a performer is very demanding. Performers, she said, make very fast choices and quick decisions within a very short time of rehearsal. Interestingly, Paige was declared a beauty queen in 1947 when she was named Miss Damsite, leading to her presence being recognized as the landmark ceremony for the McNary Dam, which is located on the Columbia River. The event saw her participating alongside Oregon Governor Earl Snell and Senator Charles McNary's widow, Cornella Morton McNary. As most entertainment pundits have said, actors would never know the movie that would sell their talent to the world and make them the star that you have always dreamt of, and so entertainers are always encouraged to put their best in every production. While Paige was preparing for the 1954 The Pajama Game, she did not know it would be her career-defining production. 
appearing as the widely praised Babe, a role that gave her instant stardom. Paige booked a place in history as a prominent actress in the American entertainment industry. The production ran for 15 months. She also had her side of the story. We were the happiest set of people you ever saw in your life. Why? Paige said everyone thought, we're going to fail. And we're going to smash. She described it as a special time in her life that she never experienced again. Life was simpler. People weren't so thoughtful. We were pleased much easier, she had said. That same year expectedly, we saw Janice Page featured on the cover of Esquire for the December 1954 edition. She was seen in what critics described as a seductive pose created by an American celebrity photographer, Maxwell Frederick Copeland. But unluckily for Page, when the movie adaptation of the production was being planned, the studio preferred an already made superstar to play the role of Babe for an obvious reason. Recall that Page did not quite do well in the movies while she was still with Warner Bros. So, the studio may have developed pessimism about her screen talent to have prompted the search for a replacement. Though another school of thought reported that since none of the two lead actors was a movie prodigy, the film version might not be commercially viable. As such, the studio felt that to ensure the success of the film, there is an immediate need to draft in one major film star. In the initial production, Janice Page as Babe co-starred with John Wright's role as Sid. Reports have it that Frank Sinatra was offered the opportunity to replace Wright, which would have seen Page co-starring with Sinatra. But when Sinatra rejected the offer, the producers rather swapped Page's role as Babe with Doris Day, who later starred with Wright. The decision left Paige stranded in what would have further elevated her status in the movie industry. But she did not give up, though her performances reduced within the following years as she took time to focus on privacy issues and re-examine her screen talent while also doing her stage productions. Paige was better prepared when she returned to Hollywood in 1957, appearing in Silk Stocking, a production that also had the likes of Fred Astaire and Sid Charisse. She made an appearance in Doris Day and David Niven's comedy, Please Don't Eat the Daisies, before appearing as a sex-needy married neighbor in 1961 Bachelor in Paradise alongside Bob Hope. At this time, Paige was beginning to find her feet on screen, appearing later in an extraordinary theatrical performance as Marion, the well-known call girl in The Caretakers of 1963, plus her TV show. Talking about how tasking her TV presentation was, Paige said unless a performer has a background from Broadway production of plays, when you have a continuing series, you don't have enough time to work. It's a wonderful proving ground for yourself. What about her private life? Paige was married three times to three men at different times, but none of her marriages produced a child. Her union with Frank Louis Martinelli Jr. in 1947 ended about four years after. She married again to Arthur Stander, a television writer and the initiator of It's Always Jan, in 1956, but the marriage was very brief as it was over by the end of 1957. Her final marriage to music composer and publisher Ray Gilbert was naturally separated by death when he gave up the ghost in 1976. When in 2001, Paige noticed an issue with her voice that experts say was a result of irreversible vocal cord injury. She was said to have sought for a solution from an acclaimed voice expert that a friend suggested. It was rather alarming for Paige as her voice worsened to a situation that she was not able to talk. Narrating her ordeal, Paige said she initially lost all her top voice because she couldn't hold a pitch for a second before it went completely soundless. After trying some professional and medical advice to no avail, Paige said she was lucky to meet a voice teacher, Dr. Bruce Exted, who was able to restore her speech. It is several years down the line this great personality once talked about her lavender bag that was her perfect companion during those active years as a souvenir of sorts that she carried from city to city. You need to see it. It's got stickers from different parts of the world. I used to keep it filled with a coffee cup, a can opener, a corkscrew, and various plastic pieces, she said. Including crackers, cheese, grapefruit, and whatever meats her fancy, she fondly recalled. It is often not easy to climb the Hollywood ladder as one actress among many. How Patty Duke became a heavy drinker as a child. You have to find it out.